guys? It's Drew from The Money Is Show, and today we got a super cool guest on the show that I want to bring to you. Uh, you guys know I love real estate, but I also love a thing called tax liens, and probably more than that, uh, I love people that have focused on retirement because it's such an important topic in your life today, and, and man, uh, how you structure that. Who, who's running that money? Who's in control of that money? What are you doing with it? Is the old way work versus is there a better way to do it? How are the wealthy doing it that you're not doing it? There's a lot of questions when it comes to retirement. And I brought in an expert here today on a, pa a topic that I'm super passionate about. His name's Sean Higgins. He also co-founded the USTLA.com. That simply stands for United States uh, Tax Lien Association. You guys will have bought tons and tons of tax liens. We'll talk about that uh, as well today on the show, plus one of his super cool passions that you guys are on love. I'll show you some of this stuff on the show today as well. So on that note, Sean Higgins, thanks for being on the show, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been Appreciate a blast it. catching up with you. Yeah, absolutely. Of some of the old times yep. uh, that, that we had out there and a lot of, lot of paths that uh, crisscrossed throughout the years. Absolutely. And a lot of the same connections as well. Like Lake, Lake County, when you were mentioning Lake County. <laughs> I was Not many people know that, no, man. No, they don't. I mean, that's Not many people. a treasure drove of properties. It really there. is. And, and I think it's such a unique thing that uh, minus the, the fact that I got in this weird place where it, it, it certainly when you, you start making kind of enough money and you can dictate like where you live, where you spend your time at. Right. And that area, and no, no foul to it, I got family there and everything else, but I just didn't want to live there. <laughs> I got to the point where I'm like, I got to go, man. Because I, I you were out. in the Chicago area. I was area. In, in that area, yeah. and I yeah. would go down to Lake County and clean house. Yeah. Like, dude, I right. mean, I would go to those tax lien auctions they had there. And, uh, and then, of course, commissioner I did, sales. Uh, the commissioner sales. Bro, I bought so many of those commissioner sales. Oh. It was, it was, and I and I I went through the process at the very very beginning. It's a crazy story how I found out about it, and this is great segue into tax liens because tax liens is one of those things that people have heard about, but they don't really know understand it. See, it's in real estate. Yeah, and it's kind of real estate, mm -hmm. and some of the stuff works in the principles, but there's so many nuances to it. And the other unique thing about tax liens and deeds is you know you have a state mandate on these but every county interprets the mandate differently yeah, yeah. so you can't systematize it so one of the problems is they think somebody thinks they've got it nailed and they go over somewhere else totally and they go, different yeah what happened totally different and you know to be honest with you the people i've been teaching over the last 25 years is what's made me such an expert because I had to go in there and know it. Yeah. I said, hey, this is where I'm going over here. I go, all right. All right, let me go. I'll, let's go figure it out and make it happen. And so um, some people, I, I think, give that a lot of lip service. You really start learning when you become a teacher, but it's absolutely true. Yeah. As soon as I started teaching people, actually this whole thing blew up, which is in, in course with when you help others, you get what you need. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that principle alone, we could spend a couple hours on. Right, right. Uh, value first, value first. Value first. Um, uh, in our education, and I've taught you teach, it, it's deliver the value. Right. And as you deliver that value, whatever it is that you're looking for will find you yes. as you deliver that value. Yes. Right. I want to tell you a story, uh, go back to Lake County for a second, and, and it kind of sets a tone for tax liens. Uh, I remember this was when I was in college, way before that, uh, kind of a wealthy guy, and I went to a church, and this wealthy guy, this church, um, I, w I was just trying to get around him because I was a poor college kid. Right. I was just trying to get around. I knew he had money. I was just trying to like out sit near him and right. slowly build this. Maybe you know, some of it would drip yeah. off on you. And yeah. one day I was just, I was just brought up a conversation with him. And the next week he brought me a book on tax liens. And it's one of the first books I ever read in real estate only because this guy gave it to right. me. Right. And he's like, you should, you should read this book and learn about it. I remember reading the book and thinking, my God, this is crazy. What do you, what is, what is he talking about? Right. He didn't write it, you know? Right. And, and then I got into real estate, did a ton of houses. And around 2000 and kind of, kind of not forgot about it, but moved on and, and didn't go back to it. And then 2000, like uh, after the crash, this has been like 10, 11, 12. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm in my attorney's office flipping houses and I'm at a closing with my attorney. It's only single sided closing, but I'm in this closing talking to my attorney and this guy comes in furious, like, like yelling. And he had a newspaper in his hand and he was like, I told, I want the attorney's name, but I told him to call me when this thing came out. Like, I pay him to call me. And he was upset. And my attorney kind of like, oh, let me, let me go talk to this guy. He goes there, talks to him. And I'm trying to listen, like, what's going on? Because I'm, I'm a nosy. It was a list. I'm a nosy person anyways. <laughs> and he's, he's telling me about it. And I couldn't catch it. And so he came back in. I'm like, hey, because well, there's always stuff going on. And I, I want my ear on the streets, right, you know. Right, And I'm like, hey, what was that guy? He's like, oh, it's just this, this tax thing. I'm like, no, no, no. Like, he wouldn't tell me. I'm like, no, no, no. What the hell was going on out there? Right. And he finally started telling me, and he's like, well, they produced this list and this newspaper, 
And I'm like, shut up. And I flash back to the college right, kid. Right. And I went to this newspaper and my whole life changed yeah. from that point. Because yeah. in Lake County, it was such a cluster. It is. They messed it up so bad. Yeah. Not the tax lien process, but the taxes. Yeah. You know, they increased when the boom was happening yep. to almost 10% property taxes. Yep. And it was just like, like boom, boom, like this, you know. And um, man, I have bought hundreds and hundreds of tax liens. Well, the uh, crazy the thing there. is, is the consistency, just in your, just focus on your area right there. I've gone back 10 years because one of the biggest questions we get is, are there enough for everybody? And you know, that, that, that. <laughs> it's the it, first question, scarcity. It's, yeah, it's, it's, there's plenty. There's been between 13 to 15,000 liens in Lake County every single year. It doesn't matter what happens economically. Mm, yeah. Consistently, about the same amount of people show up. And a lot of that's because there are some idiosyncrasies, nuances, whatever you think, that they, they, can get, they can nip you in the back end if you don't know what you're doing. Like for instance, we mentioned commissioner sales. You know, if you don't start that foreclosure, yeah. you know, by the 60th day, yep. everybody thinks it's a 90 day, nope. you lose yeah. and yeah. you have to start. So in, in reality, it's not even a tax lien that you're purchasing, you're taking the place of the county as the foreclosure. So in other words, they're advocating that role to you. Mm. Look at enough's enough. This guy's been to sale three times. Nobody's bought it. You take it over and you start the foreclosure. And once you start to piece it that way, I mean, the world just opens up. Well, cause at that point they, they, they were able to dictate the sell mm -hmm. that we were buying it from them yep. for. Yep. So even though this person might've owned 25 grand in taxes, Nope. It was irrelevant at that point. It was relevant, yeah. And they dropped it. I was I was one of the very <laughs> first groups in there. They they actually called me. They called a small group of us in Lake County. Yeah. And it was after the first auction. This is how, how crazy it was. After the first auction, I went to and I bought like maybe 20, 30 houses. Cause right. I'm like, and like, they're like nothing. Like nobody was bidding. I'm like, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. And and it was crazy, right? And and so anyways, uh, afterwards they called us and they were getting sued because they had made a mistake of not like producing enough. Uh, publications mm -hmm. to the homeowners. Mm -hmm. So they had to take back all our properties that we had bought. And redo the process. Refund us all of our money. Okay, so they called us on this meeting like, look, we have way too many of these. We need to unload these. If we sold these for $50, starting, starting off at 50 bucks, would you guys be interested? And I'm like, tell me the date, man. Yeah. Tell me the date. You're trying not to jump up and down. Oh, I was like, well, you know. Well, I mean, you know, we have to look at them, <laughs> I guess, you know. And, yeah. and man, I, when they did that next sale, I, I, was, I bought hundreds and hundreds yeah. and hundreds of them. Yeah. And like you said, though, it's still going on today. Yeah. I have students that I went and taught like 10 years ago. We're in 2021. In the middle of the pandemic, I have a student, three of them got together, and they bought 104 properties yeah. at the Lake County sale mm -hmm. in the middle of the pandemic. It's nuts, man. So it's five hundred dollars. Five hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks. Yep. Yep. And uh, so I, I was in on the fifty dollar one. What's funny was that meeting. We tried to convince them to go to a dollar, just because they have to have something. In that meeting, I'm like, yeah, they have to have something. And so we're like, well, what if you just did it for a dollar? Like, yeah. start at a dollar. Yeah. And we almost had them at a dollar, and uh, they ended up at fifty bucks. So I was like, fine, I'll take it, but I'm not happy about it. Yeah. And, and That's a hundred happy meals. Yeah. I'm, I'm buying. <laughs> I was literally buying, if you will you know, taxing house, what do you call it for 50 bucks mm -hmm. and turn it into a rental property, three bedroom, yep. one bath. I had to go remodel it, right. you know, put money into it and then turn it into a rental property, renting it for seven. So we stepped up over that. So what we did is we got these properties and then we would find, um, uh, I don't want to call it buy here, pay here, but people that had, you know, credit issues. Yep. And so we finance. That's genius. And then guess what? They're doing the rehab on yep. it. So we dropped the price down. Now their owners. Yep. So they've got the responsibility and they're like, no, we want to fix up the property. And it's giving them a second chance. I don't know what happened in 08 or right. 09 with them, but a lot of people got butchered in that whole situation. So I'm like, look it, let's just make it happen. We have a very reasonable interest rate on it. And God, it's just like a little printing machine. It is, man. Let's back up before that though, before tax liens. How, how did you, and you've been, in, you co-founded that and you said, I think in 95? 95, yeah. 1995. Yeah, we started teaching in 95. You know, we started doing, uh, my business partner did his first tax lien certificate in 91. Um, I was a stockbroker back in the uh, uh, 80s. That's how I met Tony. And, uh, you know, he had this idea. He calls me up. And at this point, I was at New York Life. I was going to become a financial planner. <laughs> you know, I had, I was, you know, drinking the Kool-Aid. You're waiting so for the speak. business card to come in the mail. Oh, I was like in there and uh, in, in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. And I loved the job. And then, you know, he told me what he was doing. I'm like, Sixteen yeah. percent. Yeah, come on. Brian. Mandated by the state. Come on. Right. That's the, that's the feedback you always would always get. get. Come right. on. So I went down to the county. I did my research, and I was like, literally, what the heck? Mm -hmm. I had two mentors at New York Life. 
I took him out to lunch and I said, this is what this person's um, prescribing me to do. What do you guys think? And I go, you'd be, one of them actually said, if you don't take this opportunity, I'll crack your knees with a baseball bat. New York life will always be here, Sean. Yeah. But this is an opportunity that's looking you in the face. And I was actually expecting him to say, no, oh, wow. to go the that course. That was a good mentor. Yeah, he was. And uh, I went at it and, uh, <laughs> You know, the rest is really history. You know, you bring a good point there because I think a lot of times if, if people that are struggling as entrepreneurs, uh, one thing you gotta always think about is, look, you can always get a job, man. Yes. Jobs are, are always gonna be available. Yes. Just like he said, New York Life is always gonna be available, which is true, but jobs are always gonna be available. Yeah. This is your, like, your moment in life that you can take your shot. Yep. And instead, you a lot of times we get stuck in only staying over here, and there's many, many reasons why that happens, but jobs are always gonna be there. Take that shot, man, yep. take the shot. So you get you leave New York life and kind of go down this road of just doing tax liens for yourself. Tax liens, tax deeds. Um, we had, those are different states. When you say tax liens, tax deeds. Yeah, tax liens, you're getting the interest rate. Tax deeds, you're actually getting the property. It's a different phase of the whole thing. And those thing. are different states that do mm -hmm. different ones, right? About half and half. Yeah. Muscle, man, it changes every once in a while. And so we started doing a bunch. We started doing fully improved lots. That's Tony was really into. And then we had some people that said, hey, we really want you to um, start teaching some people on this. Yeah. And that was actually a funny story within itself because I thought we were gonna go teach a few people. Mm -hmm. And so um, they said, hey, we got a, we got a meeting down in, in Newport Beach and we want you to meet. This is an attorney. Yeah. And they did doctors and lawyers doing asset protection. And we went to come in, well, you just teach this little strategy of making money with this whole deal. Well, I'm thinking 12, 15 people. <laughs> And like we're having dinner room. the night before, and he says, you, you got your overheads ready? What do you need? I'm like, overhead. Oh, yeah, <laughs> overheads? No, I'm just going to talk about that. They're like, and he looks at his son, he goes, he doesn't know what's going on. I'm like, I'm like, what's, you know, I'm just, all of a sudden your stomach yeah, starts oh, yeah. like, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. And he goes, yeah, we've got about 250 people in the room. <laughs> Okay, and now yeah. understand the only conference I've been to was a Tony Robbins conference. So, you know, I'm not going to pound my chest. So you're going to walk on fire. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> what I'm going to do. So um, I got up there and it was a, a complete train wreck. But yeah. everybody wanted to know what, what, what it was we were doing. And this guy had a plan. He goes, when I came to the back, he goes, you guys need to write a book. And it was, I mean, it was, so, it was so blatant. So that's what we did. We put some books together. Is that same training. attorney or just a different... Uh, Same attorney okay. that was doing the um, asset protection. Okay. He goes, this is what you guys are missing. You need to train some people. And, you know, I'd be at auctions. Um, I remember in Chicago. Yep. And this is in 95, summer of 95. I was there for about six weeks, big, long auction. And I had people tap me on the shoulder and go, hey, are you Sean? And I'm like, <laughs> so my partner was saying, hey, my guy is in the field right now buying tax liens. Because this is important because for, for, the, for people to understand, this is pre-social media. Oh yeah. So when you we when didn't people, have cell phones. When people said, "Are you Sean?" That was actually kind of crazy. Yeah, but are you Sean? Exactly. And um, Tony really didn't have a way to get a hold of me because I you know, we yeah. pagers. We're talking yeah, pagers. Yeah, yeah. Nine one one. Internet was just barely coming out. <laughs> yeah. Type of a deal. So, and uh, you know, at the end of that couple of weeks, I think I had 15 people, I, like a duck with little ducklings following me around. Yeah. And it was actually pretty hysterical because they helped me find stuff there that I was, you know, I had like a team. Sure. You know, they were, I would say, hey, we go to this floor, go to this floor. Um, there were, there were 86,000 tax lien certificates paid 18% every six months. Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, I just thought I hit the pay dirt and I did. I mean, we just went from there. We did, uh, I think about $5 million our first year. You know, a point you mentioned right there that I want to bring up just from to the audience standpoint is you have, to me, it seems like you have a lot of people that are out there. They're like, I want to be a, I want to be a personal coach. I want to be a personal trainer. And um, I understand it because there's this kind of desire to help someone. But there's this also this point of like what you just mentioned in the sense of you first were just doing tax liens. You didn't set out to be a tax lien mentor. No. You didn't wake up one day and say, I know what I'm going to do. No. I'm going to coach someone in tax liens. Right. It's like, dude, I was just doing tax liens. Yeah. Uh, kind of how my story was, I told right. you about it. It's like, right. I was just doing real estate. Right. I wasn't looking to become a real estate coach. Big difference. Uh, it, right now, and I'm not even with that right now, but I wasn't looking for that. I was just doing what I was supposed to be doing and and just kept going through the doors that were opening. Kind of like when you, the attorney said, Hey, you should write a book. It was just a door that was in front of you that you, then you went through that yeah, door. Absolutely. But, but you did it because you were doing what, what tax liens were. I, I'll be honest with you. When we first started, I was thinking that we would teach people how to do this 
two or three years, then everybody would figure it out. Yeah. I mean, that's being young. I didn't, sure. you, know, you know, most people, they do want to learn something, but they want to be with the expert that knows how to make that happen. And, you know, talk about baptism by fire, you know, when I started traveling and going to these different markets, you know, my thing was to unlock the code for that particular county. That was my job. Yeah. And that's what I did. And you'd find these really cool things out there that we were doing, but it's an authenticity in the coaching that happens. I mean, we didn't call it coaching back no. then. We didn't call it mentoring. We just call it somebody that knows what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to, you know, and we, and, 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 and literally to the point where I'd fire people, you know, if you're not doing what I'm telling you to do, you're kind of wasting both of our times. Yeah. There's not a shortcut here. Right. Um, you know, you have to, there's steps that you have to go through. And if you miss those steps, don't call me. Yeah. You know, there's, there's no shortcut. Well, that's the one thing about tax liens. I just want to put this on there for almost a little bit of a compliance disclosure. Yeah. There's a lot of nitty gritty stuff on tax liens, right? So yeah, we talk about the 18% and the $50 houses and all but that. But listen, uh, th this is not something that you do uh, on your own. When I was doing these, I hired an attorney. Yeah. Uh, for the process. Cause I'm right. like, dude, I, and I'm not going to, there's so many like eyes you have to dot and and yeah, you have to cross. Big if you time. don't do them, it's like, well, it's game over then. Yep. You lose, you're yep. out of that deal. Yep. And so just, just full disclosure, like it is super sexy, but you do need help. This is one of those things I'm just like, I'm telling you, you, you need help on this one. Um, I got, I got, I want to move on from tax liens because I want to talk to you about retirement because that's where I geek yeah, out. I love so tax liens. And as I soon as I mentioned that to you, you're great. I was like, Dude. oh God, <laughs> like finally someone I can talk to that, that I just love this Well, this here, world. let's start off with it. Let me tell you how my road was on that. When I was at New York Life, what I did was help people set up retirement accounts for the company. Yeah. So I'd go into a dealership and I'd show them how to do that and we'd, it'd all go through the NILEC program, what they call. And so when I started doing tax lien certificates, I had my own 401k and it was a nightmare. Uh -huh. Every time I wanted to do a deal, it was like an act of Congress for the third party administrator to go off. What finally, the straw that broke the camel's back was probably in early 2000s, um, somebody was late on their rent. And I didn't know about it because of the bureaucracy of the administrator, because it was in my retirement account. Uh, the before you keep going, was that 401k, was it self-directed? It was self, it was not self-directed. It was under um, Pensco. So okay. they were the ones doing it. So it's kind of. But, but they, they called the SD yes. account. Yes. It's self-directed. But you, you, you have to run anything through Pensco and their administrators and the custodians. Almost like a double closing. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, so it was it They're was the administrator. They're the trustee. Yeah, but everything's got to go through them, the paperwork, and it takes forever, dude. Yes. I get so it. So I didn't find out these people were late for three months. And so it's put my tenant in a particular situation because uh -huh. they're like, well, nobody's calling me, you know, type of deal. I can't get three months rent out of that. So I know that that dog can't hunt. And then I'm sitting there talking to these people and they're charging me yeah, yeah. $17 because the money wasn't deposited. And so I just said, there's got to be a better way. And so I was actually with a dear friend of mine. I explained the problem. And he just looks at me and goes, why don't you administrate your own program? You know, your own retirement account. I was like, you can do that. I thought I knew this. And it just exploded from there. I saw what you could do with that. Own administrator, own trustee. You write your own checks. And it's not just limited to tax lien certificates. No, it's no. whatever you want to invest. And nobody controls what you're doing. And it's just a, such a, uh, an eye-opener for a lot of people because it literally takes your game and multiplies it by two. And then when you understand how you can leverage within there, <laughs> it's like putting your retirement on steroids. Dude, when I try to explain to someone that you can leverage inside of your solo. Yeah. It is and like, the profits go back in tax deferred or free. It depends on what, what, what hat you're in, whatever. It's like, it, it, it's mind boggling yeah. to people. And then you also have the side of that you got to talk about um, that I always talk about is there's also the asset protection side of it. Yes. Because people forget about the, the asset protection the side. The only thing right now that is completely protected is a retirement account. Um, I've had. You don't have to hide it. You don't you have, have to go to, to the nope. Cook Islands and they get this trust. No. Dude, you can just do it this way. Like, and if you slip and fall and knock somebody out and they yeah. sue you for all your money, they yeah. can't touch the retirement account. So I had a. Unfortunately, Super powerful. Yeah. Unfortunately, I've had a couple of students that have, uh, you know, one was a medical situation, um, devastated them financially. They were filing bankruptcy. They called me up and said, I've got this retirement. They're going after it. I said, no, go to Paige, blah, blah, blah. Take that in, hand it to the court trustee. Yep. She called me later on that afternoon. She's going, that was amazing. He looked at the paper, looked up and said, the retirement is off the table. Off the table. Set it aside. It's not an attorney decision. No. It's not, a, it's not something you have to go fight about, minus like the case that they just didn't understand. Dude, this is a government ordained 
uh, uh, law process yes. that has been passed by Congress yes. that says it's off limits. It's 1974. It's off limits, bro. Yes, yeah, yeah, I can't touch it. And, and when you get the world, and, and, and this is where me and you just geek out on, because asset protection and taxes are the thing that I just realized in my business that I could build this business big, 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 but every time I turn around, I was losing half of it yep. out the back door. Yep. Like, just boop, there it went. Yep. And then there's also, as you grow wealth, you have to know how to protect it mm -hmm. as well because then you're just a bigger target. And yep. if you're in business, it is this day and age, it, you, it's, not a, it's not a matter of uh, if you get sued. It's just a matter of when. If, yeah. you're, if you're ruffling and you're, you're, you're growing and, and, and swaying the trees, dude, it's, it's going to happen. It's a target. And so you have this process of taxes and asset protection, and I, I just – one day just like that's it I'm, I'm i'm gonna go deep on this yeah and not to go teach it to train it i was like no for me like i'm going deep okay so let's get back to that so going back to what you're saying about i was just doing tax lien certificates so one of the things i like is transparency this is how i build wealth yeah okay so telling somebody to bake a cake and not explaining that you need a ten thousand dollar oven is not doing them any justice right so one of the things you know i look at why i'm so successful is yeah Tax liens are the vehicle, mm -hmm. but the turbocharger in all this is my retirement account because look what I'm doing. So I'm in Los Angeles, I'm teaching a class, I'm talking about the, the qualified plan where I'm self-administered, self, you know, the solo 401k, whatever they want to call it. And this dude, in, you know, stage right over here, he's probably in his 70s, kind of that Irish look with the big red nose, he's standing yeah. there, and I can sense him in the corner of my eye, like this guy's getting angry or something, you yeah. know? And his name was John. I'll never forget this to this day. He stands up and he goes, where do I get these and how come no one's told me about it, right? Dude. And I, I thought he was going to charge me, right? So I go, just, just go back there and talk to them. And the staff is going, what, what do we do, you know? Can't sit there. Yeah, we don't even know. You know, I just wanted to get him back there. Yeah, so sure, could, yeah. But that's how that whole process is. We have to start teaching people the value of this. And it, like you said, when we walk through and teach people how this works, it's almost like, a weight goes off their Dude. shoulder. They feel liberated. After the 08 crash, when people lost all that money, I, guess, I, I get it. I know how long it took you to build your retirement yep. account, and you're devastated right now, but I'm going to show you a way that real quickly you can get that back up to par. And what's crazy, dude, I, I want to talk so much, and I know we're, we're, I'm watching the clock. Dude, we got to talk a lot. Because as I, all that stuff you were saying, like when, when, you, when I would share with someone in the room how it worked, they look at you like you're crazy. First of all, they look at me like, you're making this up. Yeah. And then as, they, as it sunk in after like me just explaining it and then showing it and explaining it and showing it, like you said, it was just like this like... Light goes on. Like, oh my God. That's how the game is played. Yep. 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 And I literally, uh, uh, we talked about this earlier, I built my entire training, if you will, off of that topic because it was such an eye opening and, and what you And if you don't do that, you can't work with me. And what it, what it was was like you said it was a thing of like you they were hyper focused and I did it when I got started. I hope hyper focused on it and I'm going to use the word fix and flip mm -hmm. as this how I'm, I'm going to create wealth. And it's not true. It's not true. Fix and flip was just going to be a vehicle that I could use, like I could use taxes, I could use stocks, I could use e-commerce, I could use small business. That's just a vehicle. And what happens is they would come to the room saying, if I do real estate, I could become wealthy. And finally, after teaching for so long, I'm like, no, no, no. What, what you're wanting to know about is how money works. Right. And if you want to know how money works, well, you should know how this thing called a solo and mm. defined benefit and, and Coverdale, because this is how the game is going to be played. Yep. And this is the actual game right here. What you're just trying to talk to me about right here is just a vehicle. Yeah, that's just the vehicle just that's going to turbocharge that. Yep. That's all it is. So, but you got to know this first, because if you don't know this, you're actually going to work like three times harder Harder over here. to get the same dollar. Well, yeah. It was totally, totally yeah. a, an eye-opening game yeah. changer for me. Yeah. Um, for myself personally, and then for the, as I would teach people, I was like, dude, know this right here first. Yeah. It's amazing how many people just don't know it. Well, you know, and there's a, let's talk about that a little bit because I think that's really important. And, you know, I'm not going to get conspiratorial on we here. We can because you know I love but it. But <laughs> the banks don't like these. Because when you don't have, your, the, what they do is money under management. Yep. So they that want works. you to come in there and, you're gonna, and then you march in there. You've heard about the rollover. I just left the company. You go to the bank and they say, okay, and here's the funds you can pick. You even, most people don't even know this is an opportunity to do this. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you realize that you can be the administrator and the trustee, th forget real estate. Let's yeah, say sure, you sure. just want to do mutual funds just or the stocks. The typical or way, the normal right. way. Now you can pick anybody that's doing the right job and your money's not captured with the individual who doesn't have to compete for your business because once it's there. No, it's there. It's there. Yeah. 
Dude, this is, this is a big, big deal in America. I don't think people understand it. And, I, and I'm going to go back to a point you made a while ago in 2008. For years, people were convinced uh, that uh, they were sold on the fact of diversification. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put my money in retirement because diversified is diversified, it's diversified, it's diversified, it's diversified. <clears throat> well, then, in, 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 in this notion, and to me, and again, I'm going to go conspiracy theory here on you. They call themselves like financial advisors, right. planners, wealth managers. And to me, what happens is when you call them a financial advisor, when you walk in their office and you don't know a lot about money, because there's that word advisor, your immediate reaction is to be like, okay, well, tell me what to do. You're the advisor. And to me, there's like this thing of like, you're really a financial salesman. And if we change that title to financial salesman, people would approach it differently. Then people that would walk in would look at it differently and say, well, what, why this? Now, I wanna, I, let's, let's talk about that for a minute. What's in your best interest is not in their best interest. Bingo. That's Period. why I should be a salesman. Yeah, because like, so if I go in there and he's got a litany of mutual funds or whatever, that's all I can choose from. Period. End of story. But if I come in there and I'm the manager, I'm going to go prove to me. I manage my own mm -hmm. retirement account. Right here. Prove to me that you can manage my money right. And guess what? At the end of the year, if the numbers don't work, right. I go over here. It I can, I can do real estate, I can do Bitcoin, gold, I can silver, do gold, silver, stocks, whatever you want to do. mutual funds, CD. I like, make loans to myself. Yeah, private loan, private lending, tax liens, tax yep. deeds. Like, yep. do, and, and do you want to bring up the point of uh, uh, then going out and leveraging that? <laughs> <laughs> because when you start talking to people uh, like, I'm like, now you can, uh, I'll be like, now you can uh, borrow money from it. And I said, no, let me stop, let me stop, let me stop. What you, what you think what I mean by that is that you can borrow your own freaking money yeah. out of your account, no. but only a certain amount, no, and no, only no, if no. they allow you a certain thing. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not talking about that borrow. I'm Leverage about, I'm gonna go the borrow piece some of money. leverage. So let me, let me just nutshell it. So if I've got a million dollars with a real estate in my retirement account that's owned free and clear, you know, I can go into the bank and say, I'm going to put this property up. Let's say it's four, four properties at 250. Sure. Four properties up. They give me a half a million dollars. It's leverage against those properties. I go out and do another deal. And let's say I make another $250,000 profit. I pay the bank back their money. And that $250,000 goes back into that retirement account with zero tax consequent at the point. That yeah. is, people look at that and they just, I mean, it's almost like they're speechless yeah, yeah. and stunned. Because again, I'm going to go back to the, you know, the, the brainwashing that's gone down. You get a job. You, you go to HR, you pick your mutual funds, you leave that job, you go to the bank, you roll it over, that's been drilled into it. You go in, oh, there's those same mutual funds. Okay, I know this pattern. Mm -hmm. And you don't even know there's another option where you can, can, take, you can take control of it. Now, taking control of it means responsibility. Learn something, master something, that's gonna make that, that, that grow. That's the word right there that I, I'd always teach a class is like, look, if you play this game, just trust me in this, you have to master, not everything, you don't have to master real estate, Bitcoin, gold. You, just, you have to master all of them. Give me one. Give me one. Give me one. I need you to master one of them. Yeah. Something. You got to own it. it. And, and be so knowledgeable on that topic um, that you can use it, A, for investing, but also because it allows you then to network with other people. Right. And you might be an expert at Bitcoin. Right. And maybe I'm an expert, expert at uh, 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 flipping houses. But now we can actually play the game together. Right. And I can actually invest with your, into your Bitcoin because that's what you mastered. Right. Uh, and I mastered. So if you want to invest over here, you can invest in real estate because there's that old saying I used to say all the time in class is, is, is um, jack of all trades, master of none. Right. Yep. And when you, find wealthy, when you find wealthy people, I'm just telling you, they do not try to master everything. No. They, they just, they, they always, surround themselves with people that have hmm, mastered things. That's why I run a mastermind. Yeah. Like just, that's why I do it. Right. Yeah. And I, I'm not a master at apartment complexes. But man, I got some guys in my mastermind that are freaks on it, dude. Yeah. Like, and so I, when I want to invest my money in an apartment, I go to them. Yeah, that's so funny you say that because I get into the multifamily stuff and they're talking about cap rates and stuff like that. And I'm going, you know, I just want to go right back to my little circle. You <laughs> yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. You just tell me what I need to send you yeah. and I'll, I'll be good with that because yeah. I know that you know what you're doing. Because you're an expert at that topic yeah. over there. Well, here's another, another challenge I see you know, with people watching, you know, can uh, uh, relate to this is not giving something the proper time to, to, to get the results you want. Mm -hmm. Eating a salad once a week does not make you a vegetarian. Correct. You know what I mean? So, so sitting there getting into something, it's amazing how somebody says, well, I've been to the class, I need to do this. I'm good. Dude, you've been doing this three months. Yeah. Okay. Please tell me something on planet earth 
yeah. it starts making you the masses amounts of wealth that we talked about in three months. It doesn't, as anybody tells you that, run. Yeah. You know, we've got to build a foundation. Okay, once the foundation is built, the moon is, the, 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 um, uh, you shoot for the moon. Yeah, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, you, you, when people talk about it and they, they would come and ask me like uh, all these different questions about uh, knowing so much about real estate. Yeah, but it goes back to, dude, I've been in for 18 years. Yeah. 18 years. Yeah. I dedicated yeah. to do this right here. Right. To, to, on my own time at night, go sit there and start searching up uh, um, solos to figure out what this was. And then go call attorneys and pay a tax attorney and pay these people to, to fly to Puerto Rico because yep. I want to know more about it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, but that was, a, that was a commitment. And I'll even use the word because I think this is the word Obsession. that people don't like <laughs> is sacrifice. Yeah, there you go. That's the word they don't like. Yeah. You want, they want the wealth, but dude, it, it's, it's sacrifice. Man. Yeah. It's sacrifice. You got to be and, in. And in three months, you don't have to sacrifice a lot. In 10 years, man, you got to commit sacrificing yeah. stuff. You know what I mean? I tell people the wave I look at, um, you know, I like to surf. The wave is, it usually takes 14 to 18 months. If you plant those seeds during mm -hmm. that time period, uh -huh. all of a sudden that swell starts coming at you. You're going to make some deals. You're going to do some sure. stuff over here. But the wealth starts coming in that time frame. You know, if you've got the right people mentoring you and walking you through the whole process, yeah. you know, the way we did it was a little differently. We were, you know, going into the counties and pulling up plat maps and <laughs> <laughs> microfish, yep, yep, looking through computer paper and stuff like that. You know, that's crazy, man. Yeah. I, I I didn't have that, but I just had the newspapers. And the only thing I hated about the newspapers was they put it. It looked like a matrix when you open it up. Yeah. And because they, they'd always put the parcel number. Yep. No, not the address, the nope. parcel number. Nope. And if you know parcel number, it's like 00004 008976. It's like, my God, it's just like, a, yeah. open it up, and it was just like yeah. a matrix yeah. of like numbers, you know? Then you had to start getting really good at the assessor's maps and yeah. know where the parcel <laughs> numbers are. And, like, dude, I got some crazy taxing. I'm sure you got way crazier ones of, of, of I don't know, there's a guy that just hated it. A friend of mine bought it, and he built a house on two lots and put the house right in the middle and then refused to pay taxes on one side of it. Uh, on the tax side, but my buddy bought it not knowing. You know, we were buying them for just yeah, oh, I see, fish, yeah, 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 fish, right? uh -huh. and not even doing like maybe fifty bucks, hundred bucks, right? Mm -hmm. And then this house ended up being on like he bought this lot, but it's only half of a house because right. the other half is on this right. side of the property. Right, this, this guy's a disaster. On, on purpose, yeah. And it's like a hundred bucks. Like, oh, forget it. I'm I'm not even yeah. gonna get in this argument yeah. with this guy right here. But dude, taxes are a crazy thing. But the retirement thing is is something that I wish all of America would dive into and start peeling apart how it works. This and, is what I think needs to happen. You know, I'm not going to get into politics, but if I was president, I would say this is, I would do one thing and go to Camp David for four years. after that. <laughs> I would say everybody has to learn how retirements work in this country before you can get a job, before you can go to college, before you can do anything. Because if everybody actually knew deeply what you and I are talking about right now, we wouldn't have an issue with retirement. Yeah. But the problem, one of the problems is when you talk about like school, I always have this conversation. It's like, why don't they teach us in school? I get that question asked all the time. Why don't they teach us in school? And um, part of it is what they're teaching you in college, when you pick that field, whatever industry you picked, they're teaching you the vehicle. Mm -hmm. right? That's what they're teaching you. Just like you came to class, I'm teaching you real estate, or I'm teaching you tax liens, right? I'm, that's just the vehicle. What they're not teaching you is the money side. Mm -hmm. um, and, and part of it is because, dude, it's actually super difficult. Yeah. Like, like it's very hard to understand it, and no one's really showing you how to go do it. Um, uh, on the money side of that game. So it's like, how does someone, how, how, how do you educate a, a nation um, when the educators have no idea what you actually are just talking about? Well, they haven't, been, they haven't been practicing it anyways. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. how is somebody that hasn't been practicing that going to teach you the mechanics of what that all works? And that's, that's the reason I've had students for 25 years. You know, I yeah. thought this was going to be a three, four year opportunity and everybody's going to get it. I'm like, all right, <laughs> all right let's see go. See you later. Yeah, and then it just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling. And, you know, I get that question all the time. Why don't they teach that? I said, because that's not where their head's at. Yeah. Their head is not doing that. It's yeah. not about doing that. And, you know, hopefully that'll change sometime. But I think it's upon the person to pursue that. I mean, my parents were broke when I was a kid. And I had moments growing up that I said to myself, I remember, I remember where I was on certain occasions where I went, I will never, ever be in this situation. Yep. And, and so... You know, that was my journey going into it. Not everybody's there. A lot of people go through life and they get to the 40, 45, 50, and they're looking around going, wait, this is not what I thought we were signing up for. Then they got some catching up to be, do. What I don't want people to do is panic at that point because there's people out there that do understand the, name, the game. Yeah. Get involved with, surround yourself with those people. 
And that's what's going to happen. If you're yeah. surrounding yourself with people that aren't in the business of, of making money grow, you need to get some new people. Yep. It's, it, it, it's, it's a cliche statement you should say all the time in class. And, and I hate saying it because it's so cheesy. Mm -hmm. But it's just the God's honest truth. Uh, you, you take your uh, net worth, whatever that is, and there's a mirror of this thing right here. If this is your, my net worth, okay? This represents my net This right here, these are mirrors. And this is your net worth, and this right here is your network. Show me those people that you're surrounded. And these right here look like this right here. They're just a mirror of each other. Exactly. There's never a more true statement of bird, uh, birds of a feather flock together yep. than when it comes to money. Then it comes to money. You can take people, and if you can take apart their five closest friends, they're usually within 10% yeah. um, money-wise with that area. Yep. You hang around people that have money. Um, if you're, if you feel you know more than anybody in the room, you need to find a new you room. The, you, you, I, I call it the big fish, small yeah. pond mentality. Yeah. It feels good for a little bit until you realize, man, you are every, actually everybody else is eating Ball off and of chain. you right now. Yep. And you, you got to go, you got to get into a bigger fish. You seek uh, those out. Pond. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but you get, that's the other thing you got to look for them. I want to, uh, real quick, uh, circle back because I want to go some, your passion here. Um, if they want to know more about the tax liens, if they want to know more about the, the retirement stuff, is it both? Yeah, they can go to USTLA.com um, and then click on the free videos. Um, I've got seven videos on there that really gives a foundational um, of what tax liens are. Okay. Um, you know, and, and if you want to learn more about them, you can pursue it from there. But it gives you the fundamentals so you actually know what it is. I mean, we're, tech, we're, we're having 15,000 foot it. level. Yeah. yeah. A conversation, but there's a lot of, like you were saying, mechanics that get to that point. And, you know, I really don't want students that don't understand what they're getting into, so it's really good to that's watch the, the video. That's where more risk comes in effect. Yeah, it really does. When no. you, someone just, I mean, I do, I do appreciate the entrepreneurial spirit of plowing ahead, not mm -hmm. knowing what the hell you're doing. Yeah. But you don't have to do it that way. Well, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's who I was. Oh, I yeah. know that's who you Run were. Run your head in a wall until yeah, you finally Yeah, and then keep out. going and keep going. I remember um, a, a girl I was dating, at the time when I first got started, um, she says, you know, my mom gets really upset with you. I never married this girl. She goes, she goes why doesn't Sean just get a job at a bank and get a stable <laughs> job? Yeah, yeah. Why does he have to chase this stuff? And yep, I was like, yep. you know. Dude, it's, in, it's inside of you, man. Thank goodness I didn't, you know. Uh, I want to talk about your passion right here. You, I did not know you had this, and you came in today and you were showing it to me because I think you just got back recently. Just got back from Africa Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. The, 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 what you show me, like, I'm a, I'm, I buy art. Mm -hmm. from a very, very famous guy. And dude, your, your stuff is crazy, crazy good. So I'm gonna, I got a couple, you, I couple uh, videos, uh, photos here. So this one right here. This is a four month old um, uh, gorilla up in uh, Rwanda. We had to hike with uh, some guides six hours. And I'm not talking on trails. Yeah, yeah. Okay, these yeah. guys have got machetes. machetes making stuff. a trail. Making a trail. And so I get to the site, and you got to understand, you're standing on a canopy. You know, that you, you know, if you go wrong foot, right. you drop kind of in there, and you kind of climb in this bamboo, and there's all this sticker bushes. we got to have these, ah, oh, those stickers, man. <laughs> Don't go to the bathroom in the jungle. Yeah. I'm just going to tell you that. We'll <laughs> leave that alone. But I'm sitting here, and this little guy is playing, and I've got my uh, 85 Prime, which is a perfect portrait lens, on the camera, and I'm sitting, and he comes up to me, and I kid you not, I'm just sitting there, and he saw his reflection in my oh. lens. This is how close he was to me. I got you. And I'm sitting there going, dush, 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 and the guide's going, don't move. But he, and they know how to make the sounds. Because the silverback is like 20 feet away from me. Yeah, yeah. You know, and oh, it was just incredible. I mean, this is an insane photo right here. This says so much. He got named that next Saturday. A bunch of people from all over the world fly into Rwanda once a year, and they name all the new babies. Wow. They come in because they're really protected over there. So it's how did phenomenal. Uh, wh where did the photography passion come from? You know, when I was a little kid, very very young, my uncle came back from Vietnam, and he handed me a Pendex camera, and I started shooting. Oh, wow. And then I started doing development of darkroom and stuff like that. And I kind of gave the passion away a little bit. Uh, I stopped doing it, you know, just because it was such so much work. And then the digital stuff started coming out. Yeah. One of my students, and he's a big time landscape photographer, and he says, Sean, it is criminal how much you travel and you're not shooting anymore. Yeah. So he sent me an email with all the equipment I needed to update <laughs> myself with. I went out yeah. and got the money and I haven't stopped and I travel all over the world shooting uh, photos. So. And, and now you travel the world, but not not you're not doing it just on a side session of uh, you're there to teach tax liens or real estate. You're actually just literally going for photography yeah, now. Yeah, it's it's great that point. Yeah. This one right here, uh, this one I, I freaking love. This is the one I want mounted. Yeah, I'll uh, get printed, this for man. you if you like. This is, this is the crossing. This is the migration in the Serengeti. 
um, you know, these, these <laughs> wildebeest. They're wildebeest. They just cross the river. Yeah. And I'm not really sure why, because when they get to the other side, about two hours later, they go back across. <laughs> and there's crocodiles in Still, there. Still, I mean, I've watched Discovery Channel, yeah. uh, this episode right here, yeah. So we're multiple sitting times. there, you know, and what people don't understand is, yeah, here's the shot, but the, the amount of time and energy that gets to get to the place and flying in these planes and going in there. And I've just got a great bunch of people that we fly around with. They're wow. all master photographers. And we all help each other out. And, you know, we're in, we're in lens going, I'm at F4, I'm at, blah, 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 you know, just yeah, rattling yeah, off yeah. numbers. Okay, try, try backing off this way. Just trying to capture this stuff. It's just, uh, and the people you meet, mm -hmm. because you're, you're out and you're getting in with the community and you're learning about what's going on and what makes people tick. And well, stuff it kind of like goes that. back to even what we were talking about a while ago with real estate. It's, it going, it's going back into getting around a mastermind yep. of people that are doing it at a high level with yep. you. Yep. And it's amazing how fast you can expedite Ex that growth. Well, let me, let, me just, let me just back up. So let's talk about mentorship. So I'm shooting, I'm shooting, I'm shooting, I'm shooting. And a buddy of mine runs this worldwide tour of photographers. And he goes, Sean, why don't you come with us for some time? I've never had any training in photography. Uh -huh. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll go do that. And I went out with him and I'm like, oh, crap. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my game went like here to here almost overnight. Yeah. You know, and I got around the right people that were showing me the little t tweaks and turns. Some of it I knew intuitively, but then when it's put in context, I'm going, now I can be on purpose about it. Mm -hmm. And that's what we deal with a lot of our students. They yeah. have a lot of the funda fundamentals, but once we put some context to it, they go, oh, and then they can run with it. And that's what I did with the photography. And it's, you know, my, my, I actually refuse to watch some of his emails because I want to go on all these trips. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm going to Mongolia. I'm going to the Northern Lights. I've got, uh, oh, Northern I don't know. Northern Lights would be crazy. Yeah, I'm really excited about that one. Uh, Mongolia, we actually have a, a private invitation to photograph the, um, uh, the Eagle Huntress. Wow. The one from National Geographic. Yeah. So we're going to, we're, she's the first one in like 200 years that's been able to train the Eagle Hunters. So wow. We get to go up there and they said, uh, we were in Africa last week. I mean, we're in this area, we're in tents. And uh, there are a couple that have gone to Mongolia and they go, just so you're clear, this is like the Ritz Carlton compared to where you're going <laughs> in Mongolia. That's okay. Great. Think of dribbling cold water for the right. shower. I'm like, but you got, I got two more here and I love the, I love the lions. Yeah, I have this one is, in my office. This one here one. is a, uh, a a young man that just got done. He, that, I call that morning moose. Uh -huh, morning moose. He's got a little uh, blood there from the uh, uh, K buffalo that he had just uh, consumed that morning, and the sun was just. You can kind of see his lower parts out there, but just coming up over. And you know, I mean, it was a miracle. We got there right at that right moment, and he's sitting there in the sunlight, turned towards me. You know, you get that shot. And I actually didn't see the blood in his hair until I got into what we call post. And I'm sitting there going, lions aren't red. And I'm trying to get the red out. And then yeah. I blew the picture up. I'm like, oh my God, there's chunks of meat there. You know, yeah. so it's- He's got uh, spiky hair in the front just from that, that yep. uh, blood moose, if yep. you will. The walk of shame, the morning walk of shame. And this one, last shame. one right here is just a beautiful with the coloring in it yeah. and the, uh, the uh, um, patterns I, on her right there. I in, took in that back. Thursday, that is, last week. Oh, dude, that was last week? That was last week. Th she is a teenager. Um, you can kind of see her mom in the background. But now, again, we pull up to the rock. You know, you know Disney has the whole pride rock and all that. That's where they, they really are. Yeah. And then they're up in there, and she's sitting on this rock. And for about 30 minutes, she's playing with a butterfly. Uh -huh. She's a kid. Yeah. And she's swat just like a cat. I'm like, please, just Stop. look at me. Yeah, just yeah, for, yeah. And then, boom, you know, I got the shot on that. I mean, she's dead on you. Yeah. Dead on you yeah. looking at you. Yeah. Just a, just that a, is an absolutely gorgeous. With the, you see the, the little patterns on her legs and stuff like that? Yeah, as I said, those patterns on her legs, the pink of the flowers. Pink of the flowers. The dark uh, shade behind her. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, and her poise. Poise, yeah. It is so intense It's right almost there. like she's modeling. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, I was thinking of like a princess. Mm -hmm. She reminds me like a future princess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, My just, daughter wants this in her room. She came with me. Yeah. She's six oh, years old. Oh, on that one right there? She came with me. She knows this type. Yeah, that is an line. absolutely gorgeous photo, yeah. man. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be the guy that, that pushes you to go get these things to print. Yeah. Uh, well, and right that's the thing I got. I mean, this them. is like, a... You just, you just have them on your phone. Like, oh, here's a cool one. Yeah. I'm like, dude, print this. <laughs> Put it on my wall. Uh, yeah, we, we can do that. We can, we'll get that happening. These are absolutely breathtaking photos, man. I, I, and I, I love, love, love with the... You, you had some other ones, the black and white ones. Yeah. The one with the buffalo on the hill. That's like black and white, dude. 28 degrees below zero. That was gorgeous. And yeah, the, you know, again, you know, there's, there's a story behind the photo. It's like, wow, that's a good photo. 
but what it took to be there and get there and, you know, yeah. you know have the special permits sometimes and, and what have you. Yeah, the journey. It's, yeah. it's part of the whole process. I love it, man. Uh, last question. We're going to get to the money is here. And uh, then me and you can riff raft afterwards on self -re on, uh, retirements and how those work. Mm -hmm. uh, but I want to get to the money is question. And I got a photo here of you with the money is blank. And uh, I'll give you the, the Sharpie here. You fill in the answer here, sign it right here, and then me and you will chat about what that answer is to you. Absolutely. Foundation. Money is a foundation. Yep, that's all it is. Foundation. All foundation right, to do photography. Down. Foundation to yeah. um, help my mom. Yeah. Foundation to, um, you know, I was in Africa last week. They're struggling. Yeah. Pandemic. No, we're the first group to come into Tanzania and to Serengeti in one year. Wow. And I mean, I mean, the, the, the cell phones were going, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. You know, the struggle that they were going through. And I knew that going out there. Yeah. I know these guys. I'm out there. I know Leonard. I know Simon. I know these guys. They make a really good living. I don't want to get, paint this picture that these people were, you know, sitting in squalor. They had a good job, but they don't have PPP. They don't have stimulus checks. And I talked to the owner of the company that takes us out on these photography tours. I said, we have to do something to help these people. I, just get them over the hump. Right. This is not, not their fault, but this goes back to the whole when the United States gets a cold, the rest of the world gets a flu. Yeah. You know, how can you help some people out? Um, you know, being able to put my six-year-old daughter, she went with us on this Africa, and I was a little nervous about it. We're out in the vehicles for sometimes 12, 14 hours a day, and Shannon was right on the walkie-talkie. She's on, we have two lions over here, over, you know, <laughs> and like a chase cars, you know yeah. what I mean? And even one of the guides on the last night, he stood up at the last dinner, and he says, I have to acknowledge Shannon. She is six years old. I've had 12-year-olds in here that didn't handle themselves the way she did. And, you know, that's influence. Right. And all I've got right now is influence. That's it. You know, that's what I have. And so that money gives me the ability to take what I know and say, no, 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 no. You have to do the retirement. Look what you can do. And I can see their future going. I mean, that, that, that's my juice. That's my drug of choice, if mm -hmm. you will. Yeah. And I can't do that without the money. So any, all of the stuff that I do out there, you know, and it's funny when you look at it that way because, oh, money is the root of all evil. No, re read the rest of that statement. You know, bottom line is it's foundational to get you to where you want to go. You can do all sorts of wonderful things. And uh, the people that are in my circle of influence that have a lot of money, they all feel the same way. You know yeah. that. Yeah. You it's know? amazing uh, kind of what, what's presented to you when you come from a poor family. Yeah. That, and, that, and you're around poor yep, people. Yep. They have this idea and this ideal philosophy. They got it on the backs of other people. Not true. Yeah. And, it, and it's very unique uh, as you get as you get bigger to it. When you wrote, wrote on the word foundation and you're talking about the foundation, how it allows you to have the foundation to do this or this. Uh, which I agree with. And, and the other side of it was the foundation also means foundation in the sense of charities, foundations yep. that are charities. And, it, and immediately, I was going to see if you're going to go to it, but immediately it's one of the things you talked about. Not so much a, a actual ch charity foundation, but it's still the foundational point of like, dude, how do I, how do I help these people? Immediately. I knew, it, I knew what I was going to walk into, and it was worse than I thought. But, um, you know, I mean, I want you to think about how that is influenced. And I go back to my daughter, her being there, influence. She's going to see something on that trip that's going to trigger her sometime in life, you know, so I have a little more molding because she's my daughter, but I'm looking at Leonard, Simon, um, OJ, and these guys, they got families mm -hmm. and they're trying to figure out not just how to feed them seriously, right. but how are we going to keep our kids in school? You know, and so if I can just get them over the hump, I want, to, I want you to think about the trickle. You know, how mm -hmm. many, how many people does that have? And that kid said, somebody came into my life that didn't even know me and was willing to put up and do this stuff. I need to do the same thing. And that's how it works. I mean, this is a great, we have a beautiful world. I think that there's a lot more people that want to do that than, than unfortunately the news uh, will lead you to believe. And it's our, it's our obligation. Here's what I say. As an American, with what we have in front of us, we are the smartest we've ever been as a human race. We are in the most prestigious country in the world, period. Don't let anybody tell you differently. You have a moral obligation to be successful so you can, there are people that can't do what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And that's a crying shame for us to just let that dwindle away when people are begging to come here to take advantage of the entrepreneurial spirit and really make people's lives better. Yeah. And that's what we can do.
Yeah, it's so true, man. Uh, the, the amount of uh, opportunity that we have here. Oh. When you travel the world, you see other things. And uh, I, I do agree with you, man. That, uh, as an entrepreneur, you have an obligation duty. You do. To go freaking do this. Do this um, and teach other people. Yeah. You know, show them what it's all about. Teach people that want to know. Right, right. You know. I love it, man. Shiny, I've had a freaking awesome time uh, on the show with you. This has been and fantastic. And we will riff a lot uh, off camera. And I actually may put you on camera again. And uh, we'll shoot some uh, more social media stuff. But, dude, I love, love, love the, the, the taxing side. And I probably love more the retirement side. You know, it's funny you say that because uh, I and my partner are known as the tax lien gurus literally worldwide. We've taught more people than anybody. Um, my passion is the retirement side because that blows up everything. Yeah. It yeah. really does make life so much easier for everybody. Yeah, I love it, man. You guys watching, I appreciate you guys watching The Money Is Show. This is Sean Higgins. You guys can go to his website at ustla.com and we'll see you next week on The Money Is Show.